One, well, two, three. Welcome, welcome, welcome! Hey everybody. So we're at my house. We're downstairs. We're in between Spiffy 1 and Spiffy 2. And we have some spiffy advice for all of you. <laughs> if that's fair. So the ladies, you know, as we're going through this process and learning and we have Thursday we met and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. And at the end of it all, we said, okay, did y'all learn anything? <laughs> and they said, yes, they did. And I think sometimes that I talk too much and that you all don't necessarily listen. And not that you don't want to, maybe you just don't hear it. I don't know, who knows? We're busy girls. And so the Spiffies decided that maybe if they said it, you would hear it better. Maybe, you think? Yeah. So I'm yes. going to start with Rosemary. And not everybody wants to say something. We said we just want y'all to come and chill. And those that want to say something, that's fine. And those that don't, that's cool too. We're glad to have everybody here. So Rosemary's going to start us off. Yeah, when she asked if we learned anything, it was hard to decide what to focus on because I really learned a lot. And one of the main things Did I learned... Did you notice her nose is a little brown? Did you see that? Oh, it is. <laughs> That's Kitty, and I'm Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I love I you. I love you. I love you. But one of one of the things I learned as we're sitting in the patent class, in the um, fitting class together, is that we all, t most of us, made it more complicated than it really needed to be, and. Somehow we want to fit the patent to our body, but we think our body has to fit the patent. And that's not quite how it works. And one of the main things I'm looking at is that we really had to focus on the LCD. And in, in the group of all of us, it seems like we all wanted to look at what's wrong and Peggy would say, what and how is this fitting? And we all want to jump to where the wrinkles were, where the depth issues were. And she would remind us over and over again a few times, what about L? What about C? I was like, oh yeah, we got to do that. So I think now, by the end of this, I think now my brain is automatically thinking, look for length, then look for circumference, then look for depth. And I hope I've, it's ingrained. So the reason we do that is really just a training process. It's really to train you because at first when you look at wrinkles, you don't know what they are. And if you go through the process of LC and D and those wrinkles resolve themselves, then you'll start to realize, oh, that wrinkles a D, that wrinkles this, that wrinkles that. You don't have to do that forever, but in the beginning as you train yourself, you're really better off to go in that order. So that's why I was just trying to be so militant and just getting them to go LCD, LCD, LCD. And y'all, I'm sure, are sick of hearing me say LCD, but it is the right way to get the garment to... And you can't it. say it enough, can't in say my enough. opinion. And then you start <coughs> thinking it, right? right? You say it enough, and then you start thinking it. Thank you, Rose. And Diane, I was so impressed with Diane, because <laughs> Diane, you guys, what we did Saturday, so this class was over at 4 o'clock, and we all jumped into cars, and we went to the store of fabrics. And that was kind of fun. That was really fun. That was a blast. That was, <laughs> that was really fun for me, just to see a whole bunch of people, happy people, touching fabrics. That was just really fun. So I'm just so impressed with Diane because she bought, this is Tuesday, and she bought fabric on Saturday. That was Saturday night, you guys. And she has it on, like both her top and bottom. <laughs> she <laughs> really thought, I did it! Like, that's so cool. I'm so excited to see that. So I didn't mean to tattle on her or tell on her, but go ahead, Diane. It was big fun. It and I was, was so excited fun. to touch fabric and be with my sewing friends. Yeah, yeah. And I had to sew something up. Yeah. And so she's got on Nancy's blouse, 450, the POM. And yes. it fits beautifully. <laughs> it's really pretty. The color is beautiful. This is a fabric that we have obviously in the store, we don't have it online, but it's in her pants. Anyway, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I think she's trying to say, make it up, you guys. Get that fabric, it's beautiful, it's new, sew it. Yes? A lot of times I stash my fabric. Really? I'm sure you're the only one. I'm sure you're the only one. It ends up, you know, stored away and you're afra or I'm afraid to do anything with it, that I'll ruin it. And what I made isn't perfect, 
but I used it and I did it and I had fun. Yay, that's the, those words are awesome. Okay. Those are awesome words. And next time Kathy says she's going to get ahead of me in line because I got all the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she was a driver. She had a car. You didn't have a car. <laughs> there you go. you got to get your driver to push on the pedal. Hey, Roz. All right, so Roz, go ahead. Let's. Well, for me, I, I think this is not something that's new to a lot of people, but uh, my advice is it to grade, uh, especially if you go outside the lines, either under or over. You know, I have been uh, plus size for a long time, and I've been sewing for a long time. And so, when, you know, I, I know I have to add inches, but even when I was small, I had a, a difference between my waist size and my hip size that I always had to go between sizes. So that's nothing new. But I think from the grading perspective, and I really, I would looked at a couple of things that most of them talk about, again, going between lines. But in my case, I am larger than Peggy's largest size in my hip. Uh, and I go from like a, a 5 W to uh, basically it's, it's a 10 or 11, depending on what the fabric is. And so I have to go outside the lines, and there's nothing really to, that, you know, that gives me that guide to go between those lines. So I had to learn how to grade. And it wasn't until this week, actually, after all these many years I've been sewing, that Kathy told me about video. And for your information, if you want to know about grading from Peggy, it's Let's Sew episode number 127. Oh, my goodness. I, I know this because I've played it several times. Oh, my goodness. But, um, <laughs> but, but it, it, you know, the, th the difference I think that it made, and I've been, you know, Peggy spitted me several times for pants, which is my nemesis. But it is always kind of the same process. It's not kind of, it is the same process. And so you've got certain inches that you, you have to add to it. The difference with the grading is you do it proportionally. And so you don't have as many changes. Peggy's always talking about the fact that if, you, if you're a size D, you can fit a size B, but it's just more steps that you have to go through. And that's me with the pants. With grading, I don't have as many steps to go through. It's proportionate because it's not just on the side. It's kind of, it's graded wherever you grade. I mean, you know, grade center front and tops, but the rest of it really is kind of, you'll see as you, you've all seen patterns. So it is grading proportionately and it gets you closer to the mark. So you don't have as many changes that you need, but it also gives you that guideline that you can draw outside and actually get a pattern that is that size. That's a duplicate of what Peggy has, has already designed. And it's, just, it's opposite for Twyla. I think that's really well said. I don't think we understand grading. I don't think we understand no. what it does. And the more we understand, the better it, it turns out. Yeah. That was amazing. It is. I know. <laughs> Just it's amazing. like my discovery of aloe vera this week. <laughs> it's kind of the same. <laughs> All right, Twyla, who got a name today. You got yes, an official yes. name. Official name. She's officially Twyla. Um, what I learned was I'm five foot and Denise was six foot. And Are you five I, foot and one quarter? I used to be, but I shrunk. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so now I'm just five zero and I one, got it. one eight. Okay. <laughs> five foot and one eighth. Got it. So Denise is five twelve. I'm five foot. So touch that. She's Denise is one of the ladies in the class, you guys. Right. And so we both had on the same, I, the uh, it was 5 forty two hundred. Is that what you said? The five dress. Twelve. We yeah. both had on the same dress, yes. Right, 4200 is what uh -huh. that dress was. Uh -huh. Princess sheath. Uh -huh. Okay, I did not have to shorten and she did not have to lengthen. We're 12 inches different and it all came out in just the curves of the princess seam. But it's like you said, all women are the same size um, from like shoulder to whatever. But anyway, my main point is I did not have to fold that pattern up and shorten and she did not have to slash it and lengthen it. And Amazing, huh? It was great. Amazing. And it fit us both great. It did. Yeah. Princess seam. When you have a princess seam, mm -hmm. there's an error factor. And y'all just aren't that different. We all think we're so... Mm -hmm. I don't know if we think we're messed up or just... I don't know what, you know? But we're just a lot more alike than we are different. How's that? Yeah. You're just not the pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I like your list. Did you have a few more things? Okay. I like that Quick list. Chips that me and little Peggy did together. In practice, Peggy. in practice, she had a little list, so I liked yes. her list. Okay. When you take your muslin, you don't have to do a tracing paper. Put the pattern on top and take a Sharpie and just trace it. And oh. the Sharpie will go through to what? The muslin. Underneath. 
I know that you so it cuts said out it, one step. You said it, it on your webcast, but I didn't believe it until I did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> she actually didn't even do it herself. We made her do it in the, in the workshop. And it worked. <laughs> and it worked. I'm getting hot. Okay, so um, um, but it does save you a step. The whole goal is to save you time, and so if you make, if you have, and also, I think as we trace over and over, we have a tendency to make mistakes, yeah. and it does uh, allow us, or or more mistakes, mistakes can enter in. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, because I was getting a light table, and then I get the pattern, and then my <laughs> tracing, and it was like a whole event just to trace it. This was Got so it. fast and cut it out done. Got it. Got it. Okay. This is from Peggy, little Peggy, from the workshop. If you have to overhaul your muslins, you're in the m wrong size. No, this isn't me, y'all. There was a, a lady in the workshop named Peggy. And she was only five. She was five. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. <laughs> so she is little Peggy. Okay, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead and say again, because we, we want Little her. Peggy needed to grade what you were talking about. She needed to grow yeah, she down did have to size. She did have and to so she down. was trying to make all these muslins work, and she was doing so much work, and you came by and said, if you're working that hard, you're in the wrong size. Yeah, and she was. And she graded down, and it was much better, way great. better. And the last tip that I have, I don't remember the number. I just used it up, 20. I made it up. The grain line only matters if the pattern piece is longer than 20, 20 inches. Close oh. enough is good enough. So that means tops don't matter, skirts don't matter, make a difference? But dresses matter. Pants matter. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's true? Well, you said it, so I'm going to have to try it. <laughs> <laughs> or I believe it. <laughs> okay. Oh, now you all know why we have them, because they are amazing, and they've learned a lot, and they have taught me a lot. You know, it's so interesting to me as we go through these processes. I think there isn't anything that we say that's different for those of you who have never come to a workshop. It's simply taking the time to listen and I think to be with people who are like-minded and recognize you're not the only one who's struggling. You're not the only one who, you know, thought, you know, that had to do this or is you're just not the only one. So it's really fun to just kind of get together and play. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it, it's did. very helpful though to put it in practice with you there to kind of oversee and and first to see everybody else mm -hmm. but it's putting it in practice to actually try it out and see well that really does work <laughs> it does yeah. <laughs> yeah I really do promise y'all that I am not really trying to hoodwink you all I'm really trying to get you to sew because this is a field that I just love I love to sew love to sew Same. and I, I really entered into this and I saw that there was so much information that was like oh my gosh y'all really believe this like seriously and so it, it just spread so anyway the goal is to just kind of learn and help each other and get better at what we do what we love to do which is so and buy fabric and buy more fabric yes so with that we're going to um and i didn't ask benjamin is there should we see if there's any questions that came in during that time maybe we should just kind of see if they if you all want to ask the ladies anything you can Diane. Oh, my word. Oh, you know why, okay. you guys, just in her defense. They all went to dinner before they came. <laughs> <laughs> they came. I'm wearing my dinner, but okay, I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> You'd know they asked that, huh? Snaps for dinner. Four so piece she yoga. Little, she has a little dessert on her shirt. <laughs> That's why they're sitting like this. <laughs> now she's paying. free to sit back and relax. Everybody knows. Everybody knows it's all her <laughs> Yeah, they do ask away, don't they? Yeah. We're all family anyway. All right. What slacks pattern did you make? This is the four-piece slim yoga. So 34, eight. I don't know the number. Uh, the four-piece slim yoga. We won't give a number. How's that? Okay, so we're going to, like, wheel these ladies on and do a fall forecast. Um, so first, let's talk about fall. Um, you know, these days you all can see what's going on in the fall. You know, there is no fall week anymore. I mean, there is, but it's all, it's with COVID in the last couple of years, it's all been viral. And I think that's interesting because I don't know how many of you have been or ever been to a show, but usually most shows are about three minutes in length. And those shows cost approximately anywhere from a million to $5 million. So that's how much the designers put into those shows. And the whole goal is to promote and get your name out there and 
you know, the high gluten people come and watch, but they're very, very expensive. And I'm sure, as you've seen, those Chanel shows, you know, they rent out airports. They, you know, they're very, very expensive to do these. So I think it's kind of good that they're not doing them, not because they're, they're downplaying anything, simply because it's a lot of wasted money. It seems to me they could use that money in other ways, but obviously that's not my call. But I'm going to say now we have um, really an ability for so many of us to see what's on those fall, what's on the fall forecast. So I really encourage you to do that because you're going to pick up a lot of things that I don't see or vice versa. But I do want to start with the colors for fall. And if we're going to go to the first picture, I'm going to just grab my notes over here. Um, the fall colors are really pretty. I think they're really pretty. And I think they give us um, an ability to kind of have a lot of things included. So I'm just going to go a top from left to right across the top row. And we can see there's a really beautiful blue. It's kind of an ocean blue. It's a real deep, beautiful ocean blue. And actually, just a little while ago, we had some fabric from Oscar de la Renta. It was a, kind of an ocean blue silk. It's gone um, now. But I really do want to talk to you guys about the fabrics that we've had come in because we are just really seeing these colors incredibly. I just love that we're, we're spot on with just what we're buying, with what we're seeing coming from designers. It's just a bunch of great stuff. Um, the yellow is, it, it's here. It's just nobody wants yellow. I keep saying that, and it just, y'all just don't like yellow. I don't think people like yellow. Nope. Do you? Do you mm -hmm. wear it? You'll see it this week. Oh my, okay. Yeah. Okay. So did you make it or buy it? I made it last night, yes. You made it? Ooh, wow, that's, that's a good challenge. Okay, so maybe we'll take a picture and post it on this. Right. <laughs> there we go. Um, and that green, you know, again, a little while ago, we had a green from, it was Oscar de la Renta. Also, it was a ribbed green. It was, I think we called it a grass green, kind of Kathy, the color of your top right there. It's a beautiful color. So you can see that these colors are really clear. Then there's a pink, that next one is pink one. Now this is Pantone and I, I went ahead and left all the labeling up there, autumn, winter, 2021, 2022. So in case your monitor is not uh, showing what my colors are, you can look them up and you can really get a clear um, sense of what the colors are. That light pink, we had that Sally LaPointe light pink that's on a site right now. We're seeing just a lot of beautiful stuff. The next row is a, it's kind of a purpley plum. It's got blue undertones, just a really beautiful color. Then we see our red. Uh, there's a navy that's kind of always classic. The next one is that, it's kind of a burnt orange, but it's being called different things. Um, and we'll see those different colors here. I'm gonna show you some pictures. Then we have a clear blue. And then look at our basics. And they sit there along the bottom row, and you're seeing olive green. We've got some beautiful olive greens from Oscar de la Renta. They're not up yet. They're, you know, we really want to wait for our fall. We've got the fall patterns, obviously, but we really want to wait for our fall fabrics because it's 100 degrees outside. And it's, how hot in Phoenix is it? It's nice and cool here. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it was 97 today for the high. Twilight was from Phoenix. from Phoenix. 97 in Phoenix? No, in Dallas. What was it in Phoenix? Hot. Hotter than 97. Way hotter. Okay, so like we were talking earlier, maybe 120 or 110 or something. It was hot. Between the two. Okay, so anyway, um, you know, it's still not, what's, a cold, what's the coldest in Phoenix? It doesn't really freeze, so 48 is pretty cold. So you can wear winter clothes. Kind of. Sort of. I do. Okay. So the, the most fun thing to me about living in Dallas is we get a change of seasons. Yeah. And we get to change what we wear. You know, you just don't want to wear the same thing all year round, even if it's nice. I never want to anyway. All right, so those are the um, colors. Those are the base colors. So I want to go to the next picture. And what I did whenever I do the fall patterns, I kind of take the trends and I make either the pattern after the trend or the fabric after the trend. I usually do one or the other. So that, and I think it helps all of our clothes be a little more fresh and a little more current. But that's me. And the fun thing is when we sew, we really get to make that choice. So this is this um, big coat. This is Fabiana Flapini. This is called um, Terracotta. It is that kind of earthy tone brown color. I remember back when I was in college, this was like everywhere. It was really popular and then it's not. And then everything looks outdated. So I'm not sure how they make everything look outdated, but they do. But right now it's really in and it's really popular. Also those oversized coats, and if you notice, that's double-breasted. 
and the double-breasted left open is really a current trend. What's that? You told us it makes you look larger. It does make us look larger, it's but to be worn closed. they're still going to try to get away with it, whatever they can. Okay, and then we're going to go on to... So monochromatic dressing is really popular. It doesn't have to be the same color, top to bottom, but the same tones. And it's a really positive... For those who are shorter, I did not. I did not mean. To, I did not mean to look at you. I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. Once I realized, I paused. I just I'm really sorry. But it is a great look, and even for those, you know, I do monochromatic all the time on five eight. But it's a great look, and it is in style, it is in fashion. So when you're buying that fabric and you're buying a couple yards, you know, look at four so that you can do top and bottom with it and. And really good. It's a great look. It's very flattering as well. <laughs> Next. Here we see it again. Same thing. It's pretty. And of course, those are those base colors that we were talking about. But it's very pretty. And you can see it's monochromatic doesn't necessarily mean one piece. It just means one color. And again, it can even be tonal. So when we did this, I'm going to switch over. How are we going to show these? Do you know how we're going to do this? Okay. If you'll come look at this one. This is a new pattern we have. It's... um. This vest right here, it's eight, no it's not, it's 251. It's Geraldine's jacket, this one right here, the Sherpa. Should I pull it out? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me see if I can. It's gonna come out a little bit. Okay, so this is Geraldine's jacket, and the reason I did it is because the original jacket, this is a princess seam and a French dart in one. This is the this the original pattern was like this. Geraldine is a is a dear mom who's passed away and we're kind of honoring this woman. Um, it's so the front is all one and this front can be woven. And so the coolest thing about jackets right now is they're a combination of woven and knits. So if we look at the back, we see a back yoke, we see princess seams in the back, and it is a jacket. There is a sleeve to it. I did it in a fur, so these are the same. And I did it in a fur so that you could see that you can use anything. The original jacket had um, down in the front and then a coordinating knit for the sleeves, the back, the collar, and everything else. So I did fur and then the back you can see I just did a, a black knit, but it's cute. It's, it's just lovely. It's really lovely. And, and what I love about it is how versatile it is. So with this particular one, though, I did go kind of a little bit away from monochromatic, but it's tonal. Same kind of thing as monochromatic. This underneath is that new, is our new tea top. It's a mock tea. It's 101. It's Fisher. Eileen Fisher's come out. Same one I have on. Eileen Fisher's come out with a, um, a mock tea, and it's not a turtleneck, and it's not a, um, I have it on this one, too. I hate to dust you out of this. Um, but it's just a really... Not a turtleneck and not a jewel neck, but kind of just somewhere in between. And I think for a lot of us, I, I've heard it over and over, we just don't like turtlenecks. They're just too, I don't know, what is it, girls? Too confining. Too confining, too confining is that what it yeah. is? But this higher neck gives a really nice um, platform for jewelry. It's very flattering. It's When I saw that, I just really, really liked it and thought that would be a great base. So I did it, and you can see we've made it up in several different um, different versions, different fabrics. You do have to have a two-way stretch. Okay, so that was our version of monochromatic, which is why I went there. Thank you, Twyla. Okay, so let's go on to the next picture. So this whole drapey thing is just, you guys know, it's really, really popular. I wanted you to pick it up because um, it's our 145. It's so close to that 145 that we have, which is St. John's Top. Those are two PBS patterns that it's just Pretty. I like our 145 a little bit better even because it's got a little more structure to it. This is a little bit loose and, and not as flattering as that 145 with that draped neck is really very pretty. But gathers and ruffles and extra and twist are still really prominent for fall. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Benjamin, thank you. Wraps and shawls. And I had a lady after I did a few wraps and shawls last year, and she wrote on the comment under the, under the wrap and shawl, she said, would you stop doing wraps and shawls? And so I did kind of pull back. 
But one thing I really wanted to do for fall this year was I wanted to, there's so many beautiful fabrics that come in. There's Chanel, the Chanel's we've had, the plaids. There's just so many beautiful fabrics. And every one of them I thought to myself, gosh, I would make a jacket, I'd make a jacket. But you can only have so many jackets and their jackets are more time consuming. And so my goal was with the fall patterns was to find a wrap that was just perfect. And so I shopped and I shopped and I shopped and I shopped and I kept saying to my sweetheart, I've got to find the pattern. I've just got to find the pattern. I can't find the pattern I want. I can't find the pattern I want. I have plenty of patterns to put out for fall, but I just really wanted this one in particular. And I, I'll never forget walking out of that store and calling him and said, I found it. I found it. He goes, what'd you find? I said, I found it. Don't you understand what I found? And he said, I do. You found the wrap, didn't you? I said, I did. I found my wrap. So you guys, I'm probably a little overexcited about this wrap, but I want to show it to you because I think it's just the coolest ever. So this is actually, um, I wanted to make it convertible for us. And I already had this fabric. I had already purchased it and I had it in from New York and I was kind of waiting for the fall. So I want to explain to you what this wrap was. It was in a boutique and it was around a thousand dollars and I was going to buy it and um, they said I could buy it, but I said, what's your return policy? And they did not have a return policy. So at that point I wasn't, I didn't like y'all well enough to spend a thousand dollars on the vest that I couldn't take back and I didn't even like the colors. But what I wanted to do was to find a vest that would happen in fabrics that did, that were something more than a vest or a wrap. So let me shush up and, and start explaining. This is one piece. The wrap that I found is one piece. There is um, the back, there is a seam that goes from the side to the center front. And if you notice on this seam, it's such at an angle that all of the plaids match. And I, this one is a Chanel. This is the, we have this fabric already up. And I'm gonna show you this side seam because it is just way cool. And can you see the side seam there? The answer is no, you can't because it matches perfectly. Because the way the pattern is made is such that as it automatically happens in an even plaid. It's like totally genius. And then there's a pocket in that seam. Now this one, I didn't put the pocket because I just wanted you to see different versions, but that seam actually starts from the back. So then I started thinking, because this is a wrap or vest, and the vest are what's so popular for fall, is why couldn't we put a sleeve in there and it could become a wrap or a vest with a pocket or without, you could have the options. So we put a knit sleeve in the pattern. We put a knit armhole because we know that you can cut it bigger. You have a harder time making the armhole as to what it should be. And it's just the coolest wrap ever. Rosemary, you don't want to try on this wrap, do you? I would be happy to. Really? Yes. <coughs> I like the color. Okay. So this, you guys, is a piece of fabric that we have online. I just put it up today. I don't know the number, but it's new today. So it's a one yard piece and you can see it's, it's pre-fringed. But the way you can cut it is you can cut it to, and you wanna let this kind of hang over your shoulders and then bring it around to the front. Isn't that adorable? So the wrap has so much more structure. That's cute from that. That's yeah. really nice. So that's another thing, I'm glad you said that. If you turn around back to the camera, the back hangs straight. That's the beauty of this. The back actually hangs straight and all the plaids are straight across the back until it comes forward to the front, but then it aligns with these front pieces. You probably don't want to put a sleeve on, but thank you for doing that. It's lovely, thank you. It's, I just, again, it's a way to use these structured fabrics and have them made up in no time at all and really be an easy thing for us. And vests are all over the place. I just can't tell you. They're they're knitted, they're woven, they're short, they're long, they're just really, really stylish. And we haven't really seen vests for a while in fashion. So it seems appropriate that they've really started to kind of hit the mark. Can you all find the seam? This is like, yeah, where's yeah. Waldo? See, where's the seam? Just amazing. I had to look on the inside to see where the seam was yeah. at. Isn't that it's cool? Just yes. amazing. I didn't it's just, we had a sleeve on it until you it's, it out. So the really sleeve, nice. again, is an option. 
And we really just did the sleeve so that you'd get more versatility out of it because to me, as long as you had the vest, you should be able to have the wrap and, and make the sleeve. Okay, so let's keep going on in our photos, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay, so this is the wrap I was talking about. And the next one is actually the wrap that was in the store. And you know, I might have been tempted to buy it just because it's a good excuse to have a great wrap, but I didn't like the colors. You know, it's nothing terrible when you know you'd never, ever, ever, ever wear it. But that's how the wrap looks. And then, of course, see how you don't see the back, but you see the front. And this is, um, you can actually look this up and then go through and see the different sides and see the pictures. But the fact that it's one piece, it's one pattern piece, and just the way it sews and the way it turns together, I don't think it's any short of genius. It's really pretty cool. Somebody definitely worked on this. I feel a little guilty copying it, but maybe not that bad. Okay, more people will get to use their uh, design than those who have to spend $1,000 for it. But we've got a lot of reversible plaids. We've got a lot of beautiful fabrics that are going to re be really nice for this. Okay, let's go on. Oh, is that the last one? Okay, sorry. Got it. Okay, so the one thing that I, I passed over when we were talking about ruffles is this top right here. And this is an asymmetric... I probably should bring it out a little bit. This is an asymmetric um, front, so it's kind of a double-breasted. When we were talking a little bit about double-breasted back there, uh, this is a little double-breasted front. And I wanted you to see the ruffles because these ruffles are really popular, but this blouse to me was just really beautiful. So when I saw that, I thought, okay, that's like just really, the neckline is beautiful. Obviously, it could be worn turned down if you want. The back, it has a yoke, and it also has little pleats in the back. It does not have a shoulder seam. It has what we call a dropped shoulder. I know a lot of you think dropped is this way. It's not. Dropped is this way. Isn't that pretty? It has a two-piece sleeve. It has a cuff on it, so you can roll it up if you want. It has a bust dart, B, C, and D cup bust dart. I'm going to turn it around to the front because recognizing that you all don't want the ruffle, I did the one I have on, which is two of the under piece, which is piece number two. So you leave this one off and you do two of these, and then you just get an, an asymmetric wrap, kind of a double wrap. The reason I did it in velour is velour and velvet and shine, those things, faux fur, those things are massively popular for this year. And I, I don't know if it's just because they're trying to change up the fabrics, or I'm not sure what, but we're seeing a big velour and velvet. And we had quite a bit of it. We've sold quite a bit of it. We have, a, we have more coming in, but it's, I just love it. It's soft. It's, it's fun. It's easy to sew with. It's poly. It's almost all poly, but it's just really easy to sew with, and it's a lot of fun to, to work with. Okay, so having said all that, I'm going to give you guys some time because I thought we could ask questions. And we can either ask questions of the ladies, we can open it up to them. I know, see, it's really nervy, huh? Or of the clothes, either one. Benjamin, that puts you on the spot too. But if you don't mind, we'll see if we have any questions. Okay, Roz. I can't read it, so... That's okay, I'll read it. Okay. What did you make with the red textured knit from New York? <laughs> <laughs> I almost made this last night, and then decided She's it was, got on Georgia's top. Too linear, you guys, it's adorable. But uh, I, it's still in my I, I, line of vision, so it will be made this The red year. textured, that is too linear for this. Yeah, it is. Good choice. This is too soft yeah. for that. Okay. I love that fabric. Stash so we, have to, we, should we find out who asked that? Oh, I bet I know. Oh. <laughs> Somebody okay. wanted that fabric before me. Oh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> so she's still wanting it. Oh, I that's so. too funny. I have a fit question. I have made 195 maybe 60 times. I love it. <laughs> I've probably made it that many too. However, some tops ride up above the bust, giving me a huge wrinkle across the armpit to armpit. What does that mean? That means the negative easel is a little too aggressive. Okay, so things don't ride up against gravity unless they're too small. Things go down. So if things are riding up, you're just making that negative ease 
most likely a bit too aggressive. It's too small. And see if that syncs with what you think. The back of the fall patterns on the website is not showing. That's because the back of the fall patterns are not done. Okay. <laughs> the graphic artist is still working on the back. How are the wraps for the five foot ladies? How do you shorten them? All the way, we have a length and a shortened line on everything so that you can make them, make sure they fit. Okay. How many yards does the vest use? One yard. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. That is good. Yeah, that's not with the sleeves, because obviously that's not the sleeve, but the vest itself is one yard. Okay, what else? You should ask Kathy, shoe, cute shoes, they're really cute. Maybe if I put them on here, I'll remember. <laughs> I asked her on the webcast and I couldn't remember. Do you know how much fabric you need for that wrap? Not if I'm lined with the pattern yet. The wrap, one yard. I'm gonna assume the wrap is the vest. Yeah, one yard for this. Wow, it's a good use of yardage. It is, this is like, I am so excited to find this pattern. I have yeah. long sleeves on it. I probably shouldn't put long sleeves on long sleeves, but we're gonna do it anyway. Th I love this pattern. I can't tell you enough. Like, I'm so excited about this pattern. It's, it's really cute. cute. What's that? It's really cute. Yeah, and I mean, it's got this fun thing here, so you can actually wrap it up over here if you want. It's just adorable. It's got <laughs> pockets. <laughs> pockets. Yeah, so. The pockets are essential. <laughs> for one yard. Yeah, one yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing, one yard. Okay. Will there be a pre-sale for the fall patterns? Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. That's probably a really good idea. When will it start? This morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> They're on sale now, right now. The pre-sale, if you go to YouTube, you can go to YouTube to sell the patterns and the, the, they were released. We had a video, we have a video releasing of the new ones and they're out, you can see it. And the starts today and it'll end next Tuesday. It goes for seven days. Are you all very experienced sewers or do you have different levels of sewing skills? That's a great question. I probably have the least. I've only been sewing for about four and a half years. So you didn't sew your whole life? Your mom I never didn't sewed, teach you to sew? Even, not even a button on a shirt. Wow. What made you sew? What made you want to? I couldn't, I moved to Utah and I couldn't find a job in my profession and my kids were getting older and I felt like I needed to find a new hobby, and I said, I will sew for my grandchildren. So I figured I would learn to sew. That's cool. That's very cool. Kathy, you think you're a good sewer? I don't know that I'm good, but I've been sewing a lot. My mom paid a lady to teach me how to sew when I was like nine. Wow. So she did not sew. She didn't, but that was an essential skill. She, felt she like, thought that was. Oh, yeah. that's cool. That's very cool. Diane, where did you learn to sew? My mother. I've been sewing mm. since I was a little girl, but not apparel. I only started oh. with that with Spiffy. How long ago was it we came the first time? Oh, yeah. for four, four years. Four years, yeah. So but you're relatively new sewer too. I mean, to apparel, doing clothing. yeah, yeah. I'm an excellent quilter, but sewing. I'm just <laughs> the apparel. I'm just learning, like everyone else. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Roz, uh, I learned from my mother, and I've been sewing since well. Apparel since high school, uh, but my mother was a seamstress before she was married, and she was a beautiful seamstress. I, mean, she, I still have her works and far better than mine. I did not pick that trade up necessarily. Oh, I think you're a good but seamstress. But it's um, and that's saying something because yeah. she's worn some outfits to Spiffy that were really pretty. That yeah. blouse and top you had on was so beautiful. Oh, thank you. So you don't give yourself enough credit. I don't so as well as, as she did. Yeah. Her, her just everything. I mean, she would cut from newspaper. To make a pattern, so she was one of those individuals. But her handwork was just absolutely perfect. Mm, that's cool. Twyla, uh, my mom taught me to sew, and then I taught my daughter to sew, and we had three generations sewing together. Yeah. And I always thought my mom was such a great seamstress, and then my daughter told me I was such a great seamstress, and so Aww. that was really cute. Aww. Nice. Aww. I don't have a daughter to tell me I'm a great seamstress, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so. May we see the inside of the plaid pocket, the one I have on? Yeah, there's the inside. 
How much fabric does that wrap with a fringe take in 60 inch fabric? One yard. What? All right, next question. Is there a way to grade up George's wrap or Brooke's top to make them la larger? Roz could answer that question. What do you think, Roz? Is there a way to grade up those patterns? Well, it's interesting. I do have a question about that. Okay. Um, Let's answer you, that. You can grade it up, um, but the only thing, I, my question was more about the size of the shoulder because I had gone from a five. You finally convinced me to go to a five. <laughs> and go, you didn't use an eight sleeve. So I didn't know if it made a difference, but yes, you can grade up. I graded up on this today, as a matter of fact. Okay, yeah. so George's wrap in particular does not have any sizes graded on it, I think is why the yeah, question's that's... coming in. So that means you have no lines to draw. It does have... No, not George's, does it? George's wrap. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. that's okay. Um, and so you don't have any lines to kind of parallel. So the best thing I would suggest is, number one, I, I think you should make it before grading because I don't think it needs to be graded, which is why I didn't grade it. That's number one, you should make it first. But number two, if you recognize where you want the change to be and just label it, literally write it on the one you make up, your muslin, and then take it back apart and you'll be able to see what's length and what's width. So you, you know where to change what you want to change. That's what I would recommend. It is a weird pattern, I think is the best way to say that. And especially once you get it made, it's hard to see what's going in what direction. So just make it up, label it, write on it, and then take it back apart. And make whatever changes you want. Sound good? Wow, only one yard for that wrap, yes. Wow. One yard, how wide? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Get the pattern, it'll tell you. <laughs> the pictures of the new fall patterns online do not show slide two, so we can't tell how much fabric we need. Yeah, I know, but let's, let's be logical. Let's say we can do without the pattern back for right now. A blouse takes two yards, two to three, depending on your size. It's not any rocket science, right? A knit top takes one or two. You only have a little bit more than the collar is all you have. So you can go by that base. A wrap, I've told you, is a yard. And the jacket <coughs> takes any jacket. It ta if you're using the whole fabric, I would say either two or three yards. So it's not anything that we haven't seen before. You just can't see the backs just yet. We just haven't got them done, you guys. We'll get them. Can a woven sleeve be used for the wrap? It can, it can, but let me just tell you and warn you. The reason I didn't put a woven sleeve in is because when you're using the fabric, like th this is a Chanel, and I, and I fringed this. I went ahead and just fringed this on my own. It's kind of a fun little project when you're just sitting around doing nothing. Um, I, I went ahead and did cut a sleeve out of this, and it's a, a, a different look. It's one I didn't like because I used a two-piece sleeve. I used a two-piece blouse sleeve and um, it, I just didn't like it. So yes, you can. And you just want to put on an armhole that then is big enough to fit. You know, you can use your templates, right? Use your templates. <laughs> I forgot you scrapped that comment, didn't you? I forgot. I was doing the French curve, and you right. gave it over to me. Oh, I forgot. That's okay. I forgot Kathy. Kathy was going to comment on. Become friends with your French curve. Yes. And learn how to use it correctly. Thank you. That's right. Become. <laughs> I like you with the French curve. <laughs> Become friends with your French curve. I like that. Become mm -hmm. friends with your French curve. So anyway, when I used a two-piece sleeve and it was the same fabric, <laughs> I didn't like it. It was too heavy. It was too bulky. It, it, I just didn't like it. But yes, you can do it. Absolutely. Okay. What pattern is the purple sleeveless top on the dress form? This is 101. Um, the purple fabric we had, that was a fabric we just, we just sold out of it. I just really like this purple and I wanted a top out of it, so I made it for me. Does Peggy drape you all? Oh, does Peggy drape you all or do you drape yourselves? Both. There, Both. there could be a third option. They drape each other. And yeah. then Peggy checks our work. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 so she didn't and <laughs> 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 No, it's fun, you guys. You have to learn to drape. In order to learn yeah. to drape, you have to drape each other. So yes, sure. they drape each other. Yeah. But then we make sure everybody's... And yeah. that's the important part of the learning process, I yeah, think. It is. Yeah. Not only are we draping others, we're watching other people drape. So we're learning in all aspects of it. Yeah. yeah. I want to add to that, too. In the beginning, we all wanted you to like make sure that we were doing it correctly. And then at the end, it's kind of like... You didn't even want me around. We wanted you around just to tweak. That's <laughs> true. But like this morning, uh, I was draped, and then I also draped you guys, and we're not even in the workshop. We're the days between Spiffy 1 and Spiffy 2. So we're having a lot of fun. Isn't now. that exciting, mm -hmm. you guys? It's so exciting. Like, I'm such a proud mama. I realize <laughs> your success has nothing to do with me. It's everything to do with them, but it's really fun to see the progress. And she's right in the beginning. Everybody says, well, you draped me, you draped me. Everybody crowds around. No, y'all go away. Everybody drape each other, <laughs> and then I'll check. And that's really, you know, the doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was well said. Really well said. Um, is the new mock top for fall a knit or a woven? It would be a knit. And it needs to be a two-way two. knit at that. Okay, you have to have a two-way knit or else the, the mock will choke. not mock. <laughs> 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 it will choke. You can't get over your head. I mean, really, I guess that's the best way to say it. I just made Giorgio's top. So did Roz last yes. night, right? Yes. You guys were so, I bet at the same time on the same pattern. Is yes, that amazing? It yes, it was. <laughs> what is the best way to know whether the cup size is appropriate? I'm sensing mine might be one size too large. Do you want Yours. to answer that? Hers. What's the best way? Yeah. What's the best way to know the cup size is too large? Oh, if you have to do too many adjustments to it. What, I don't think your cup size is going to be too large. You'll have gapping at the armhole. But in Giorgio's, you're not going to have gapping. No. I mean, it, you're not going to, you can't go too large. We only have a D, no. and even if you're a B cup and you no, use you a D. No, you can't go too large because I had to go back and take this one down a lot. To circumference, though, not cup size. Wise, yeah. She's talking about cup sizing. No. Would you think it's fair you can't go too large for cup yeah, sizing? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Remember that lady that came in a C cup and left a D cup? Yes, we did. We, we did bust exercises every morning. Many of them increased in cup size before they left. And I, we won't say who that is because she's I don't home. remember. And she emailed me that she was home, but I won't say who that is because it will embarrass her. Right. Okay. Well, the point was, no, we you said know to tell are. her husband when she got home oh. that she increased one cup size. But the point was, like you <laughs> said, if somebody was in the wrong size, then whoever had that muslin would just try it on, and like that was fascinating to see how one size made a big difference. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, are you still answering fitting and pattern questions in emails? I haven't heard back in a long time, only because I'm about 30 days behind, literally. If you are before 30 days, I've answered. If you're last 30 days, yes, I'm still answering. Just give me another week. When doing a high round back adjustment, do you need to redraw the curve on the back armhole? No. Does the top have a separate piece for the mock that is sewn on? Yes. Yes. Okay. A lot of questions, yeah? Yes. A lot of questions. Is it hot enough for you here, you guys? Lovely. We know she's cooled down. It's good. I'm good. One more call. Is there any more of the light blue fabric available in the store? I took <laughs> all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't buy any. You have to hurry and line. get ahead of me in line right. or you're going to miss out. I couldn't buy any. You went to someone else, so... <laughs> So we're going to the Spiffies this weekend. They're going to make sure Diane's not driving. I know. We'll put her in the car with Roz. We're going to give her in the car. No, I wasn't. No, no. What I mean is we'll put her in the car with Roz, and Roz will have instructions to stop off somewhere first <laughs> so that Diane. anybody else in the car with me <laughs> will get yeah. to the store first. Don't get in the line give her, behind. Give her an hour after the fact. Did you buy all the blue? She I did. bought it all. She did. It's a beautiful. They, they might have been talking about that blue. The wrap. No. Oh, is there any more? No, because that's not at the store. That's online. Uh, I put that okay. up online. No, I think they like your beautiful. blue. You snooze, you lose. Nice. You <laughs> well, they didn't snooze. They just weren't even in Dallas. Okay. All right. Is there a French start in the mock top? There is. Does the new mock top come with sleeves? It does. 
You guys, I got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever possible, I want to put pockets. I want to put in, you know, this one. When I did this one, this has, there's a seam there. I just can't see that seam, but there's a seam that's coming here, you know, down here and over here. Is it lined? Is yeah. anything special to sewing fur, big fur? No, it's really beautiful. It's so easy. Just push the fur out of the seam and uh -huh. out, you know, push it together and then just sew it. And then I just put a, a punturum on the back. But anyway, there's no pocket sure. there because you don't need a pocket. So th my goal is to always kind of give you options in that pattern if you want sleeves or no sleeves or pockets or no pockets or all that kind of stuff. How are we doing on questions? No questions. Yeah, no questions. Hey girls, we're good. Okay, so the pre-sale starts today. If you haven't been to YouTube, go to YouTube. We'll send an email out on tomorrow with a link so you can see them. And our goal is to always kind of get them to be current and versatile so that you can see the different options that we have for you. Um, and if, as always, if you buy three, you get the fourth one free. And that is free shipping. Someone said to me, you don't get the fourth one free. It's a dollar more. Well, it probably might be, but Give me the spirit of the statement. You know, basically you get a pattern free and it's free shipping, okay? And that will go through Tuesday. And then we'll deliver those patterns the third week of September. Third week of September. How do you decide what fabric to sell online and what to put on your store? Okay, so everything at the store will go online. The store is just really a holding place. We've just gotten to where we sell a lot of fabrics and we were buying more and more fabrics and where we ship from couldn't hold all the fabrics and this smart little man back here that y'all can't see said why don't we just open up a little store of fabrics i thought wow that's a pretty smart idea and so we did so they circle once they leave the store they go online but the store we deliver to the store and everything goes to the store we organize it we kind of make it pretty but yeah, it's kind of like nice. looking in my secret stash before it goes online if it makes it online. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you all to feel cheated because Sorry. really most gets online. It may not be the yardage that it started with, but most doesn't sell all the way out. Like the spiffy ladies, the spiffy ladies hit last week, and so that was the exception. The store is brand new, so it's still. Does Geraldine's jacket have sleeve? Yes. Otherwise, it wouldn't be named Geraldine's vest. But yeah, we had two versions of Geraldine's. This is Geraldine's jacket. It has a knit sleeve and a knit body, a knit back, and then the vest. What kind of fabric is the blouse made out of? This is a cotton. It's a stretch cotton. It's beautiful. It's online. I might put it up today. The four fabrics I put up today was this blouse and the Sherpa. And the Sherpa is a knit. I put up the blue. And I put up, oh, this. I put up my velour that I have on. I have so many layers on now, I don't know what I'm waiting for you to pass the, that. This comes pre-fringed. Yeah, so this blue comes pre-fringed. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah, so you just cut between the fringe. Now, I went through, if you look at that, and I knotted every single end of the fringe. Okay. But that's just because I wanted to. Okay. You could just leave it. It's cute, I think, either way. Yeah. But I just or went just through and knotted because... Heaven. I yeah, was at Neiman's gorgeous. and I saw the, a vest and it was all fringed like this and it had knots in the end. And I asked the lady, why is it knotted? And she said, well, usually the higher end is knotted. So I went through a knot at all my fringe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and the other ends, you can see they're already done because they're the selvage. Yeah. So, okay. Are we good? Are we ready to have, do y'all want to say happy, so any other questions? Yeah. Oh, we have one more. Okay. Then we can say happy sewing. Okay. okay. I'm in. <laughs> That's a bad question. Okay. Peggy, if I heard right, the fall patterns are available tonight. However, I can't order them until tomorrow. No, no, no. You did not hear right. Here's, here's right. They're available now. They came out this morning. We haven't sent out an email with a link reminder. We will do that tomorrow. But you don't need the link reminder. You can still order them now, right now, right now. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay. The fall is ready. It's here. And so we say, Happy, Happy Sewing! sewing.
Thanks, you all. Appreciate it. See you in two weeks. Bye. 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 Say bye, Marty.